So in our unit on solutions, we have a number of important vocabulary words. We need to just make sure we're all using the same terms in the same way so that we understand each other well. And so a solution, this goes back to first semester, is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances in the same phase. In our case, we're usually talking about a liquid solution, but in fact, the atmosphere is a solution of gases because we certainly can't see a difference between oxygens or nitrogens or CO2s in the atmosphere and the gases move around constantly so that they stay basically the same concentration at all points around the earth. But for us, we're really going to mostly be talking about water solutions. So one thing we said about a solution is that it is transparent. You can see through it because the particles in of the mixture are so small that you can't see them with your naked eye. So in a solution, you have two pieces, the solute and the solvent. The solvent is what is going to dissolve the solute. So for example, if I am making salt water because I have a sore throat, then the solvent is the water. The water dissolves the solute, the salt. And so we look at whether things are soluble or insoluble, and that really depends on a particular solvent. So I could say that salt, for example, table salt, is soluble in water. It will dissolve in water. However, I could take oil, like olive oil, and I'll find that table salt is not particularly soluble in olive oil. It is insoluble in oil. So soluble means that it will dissolve in a particular solvent. And usually we will be talking about water because it's the most common thing that we use as chemists insoluble means it will not be dissolved by that solvent. And when something dissolves, it does that using two processes. There's basically two steps to dissolving the solute. Okay? First, the solvent molecules are going to have to collide and work and move apart the solute molecules. I like to say that you didn't ever do this, but dissolving things is a tiny little horror show in a beaker because the solute molecules are being torn apart by the solvent. But once those solute molecules are moved apart, then the solvent molecules wrap around the solute. They surround it in a process called solvation. And that keeps those solute molecules from just sticking right back together again. So to look at it in the form of, say, a salt crystal, here I can make some salt water. So I have water as my solvent and sodium and chloride ions in the crystal of the ionic solute. And so you can see here these solvent molecules are getting in and they are dissociating these ions. They are pulling them away. Then you see that the solvent, the water, surrounds the solute and that is solvating. So here we see the solute dissociating. Here we see it being solvated by the molecules of the solvent. So when you look to see if something is soluble, a roughly useful handy rule of thumb is the idea that like dissolves like. And that goes back to first semester and the idea of molecules being polar or nonpolar, having a lopsided distribution of electrons or being evenly symmetrically distributed with their electrons. And we find that polar solvents, like water, will dissolve polar solutes. 
So like water and ethanol, which has an OH group on it, or water and sugar. Sugar has carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And those hydrogen and oxygen bonds are very polar. So water will dissolve that polar molecule. If I have a nonpolar substance, something like an oil that's made out of lots of C's and H's, then those are the things where we will have a nonpolar solute able to dissolve. And so glucose, which is soluble in water, is not at all soluble in oil. And some compounds that are soluble in fats will not be soluble in water. That's why sometimes you will see people make oils with certain herbs or spices in it. And sometimes you see things like vanilla extract, which is made with water and alcohol, because that is a polar compound, the vanillin that makes it taste like vanilla extract. So thinking about water, water, water everywhere. Water, of course, you remember from first semester has a bent shape. Water is very polar, is very lopsided electron distribution. Water has a very high boiling point and melting point for how small of a molecule it is. If we think about propane, propane is a three carbon compound, C3H8. And so if we add up the molar mass of propane, we find that the molar mass of propane is 48, 44 excuse me, grams per mole, where water only has a molar mass of 18 grams per mole. But that much larger compound, propane, is a gas at room temperature where water is a liquid. And it has to do because there are very strong attractions between water molecules because water is so polar. And water is an excellent solvent. In fact, oftentimes people call it the universal solvent. So polar water molecules are going to use their partial charges to pull apart an ionic solid or pull apart the, the larger particles of a polar solid. And some solids, of course, are better at dissolving than others. Often it really has to do with how much alike they are with the solvent. So when we get to this part of the year, I usually tell people to go make jello. Because when you open up a package of jello, you see that the particles are extremely small. And that's in order to help the jello particles dissolve faster. So you see these three factors here affecting the rate, the speed at which something dissolves. You can increase the surface area. You can make it smaller pieces. Smaller pieces have a larger surface area, so there's more space exposed for the solvent to come in and dissociate particles. But when you make jello, one of the things you do is you stir at first. You stir and stir and stir. I think you have to stir for two minutes. And stirring the solution also helps speed up the rate, the speed at which a solute will dissolve because you're carrying away the solvated molecules and bringing in fresh solvent molecules to interact with the solute. And the last thing I can do to make things dissolve faster is I can heat the solvent. In the last unit, we remember heating makes molecules move faster. And the faster the solvent molecules are moving, the harder they can collide with the solute and dissociate molecules.